Okay, so yep, data frames. So for pandas data frames, um, series are really nice, right? They do some cool operations. They're actually really, 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 really fast. Um, the problem is that data generally doesn't come to us in a single column. Um, now it sometimes does with time series analysis. Oftentimes you'll just be dealing with one column of data, but oftentimes your data is uh, it's more highly dimensional. So you'll have different columns. So in your Excel spreadsheet, you'll have more than just one column and the index. Um, now when you've got more than one column, when you've got highly dimensional data, what you'd use is a data frame. So data frames, as you might guess, are basically just combinations of series. Uh, let's go ahead and construct a pandas data frame here. So the, the, the mental model you can use for a data frame is of course an Excel sheet. Um, so it's got an index, which is sort of on the far left hand side. It's got a, a top little part. These are the columns. These, these are the different series that you've got in, in pandas speak. Uh, and you can have lots of them. Um, okay, so here's how we construct a data frame, at least one way to do it. Um, we feed into it series and indices. So in this case, we've got a small series with index A, B, and C. In this case, we've got another big series with index A, B, C, and D. And we can put those together into a dictionary with one and two being the names of the columns, again, okay, the names of the series we're gonna see. And we can look at this data frame here. So we've got two columns, one and two. We have an index, A, B, C, and D. And notice for our column one, index D is gonna be NAN. And why? Because we just didn't pass it in. Um, there's uh, lots of ways to go ahead and construct these guys. Another way is you can just pass in scalars or numpy arrays. Um, so that's totally fine to do it. And notice if you just go ahead and you pass in a single value to a column, it will go ahead and duplicate that value throughout. So hello. Um, do I make data frames like this? Again, I generally do not. I, I generally sort of stray away from actually constructing data frames myself. Um, what you'll often find is you'll get data and the data will be in an Excel spreadsheet or it will be in a relational database and you'll, you'll pipe it into pandas. Um, and we'll go over that a little bit in pandas IO. Um, and then you will have a data frame. So you won't necessarily need to construct the data frame yourself. Um, is it useful to know? Yes, I, I have used it. If it weren't useful to know, I wouldn't be showing it to you here. Um, but just sort of giving you this caveat. Data frames have two things, as, as we know. They've got columns, uh, well, two things. They've got kind of three things. They've got columns, the index, and then we've got the data. Uh, so in this case, uh, we've got columns of one and two and the index of zero, one, two, and three. We can change them by just saying df.columns goes to one and two instead of the words uh, and the index going to these letters. Really simple. Um, I do this actually quite often. Uh, this type of operation where we reset the columns is really, really quite common. Um, in addition to that, uh, we can go ahead and get the same uh, series object back from a data frame pretty easily as well. So let's make a new data frame. And to get the series back out of it, we simply pass into our square brackets the name of the series we're interested in. So in this case, we want to get series one. We can get back series one, and this will be this entire series. And we can do all of those same series operations that we saw above on this data frame here. Um, that's what's so lovely about pandas. Um, it uses the same metaphors throughout. So it uses the same programming syntax throughout. It's composable in that a data frame is made of series and series are made of numpy arrays. And so it's kind of really intuitive of what's going on. So pretty cool. Um, there are a couple ways to index into these guys. Um, we can index with uh, the uh, column name here. When we have this, uh, this column name, we can do lots of things to it. Uh, we can delete this column name. So if we del one, uh, we can go ahead and check out our data frame. So DF here, and there's only one column, it's two. Now we can make uh, new columns, incredibly common. Uh, you might want to go ahead and add two columns together and sort of be like, this is the sum of sports spending throughout if you've got maybe a column for basketball and, and soccer and, and, and another sports spending. So in this case, I'll take DF2 plus DF2 equals DF3. I'll make a new column DF4 and set it to a simple, uh, um, a simple scalar. In this case, one string, and it will, again, it will broadcast those. It will show them all throughout. Um, and five, I'll go ahead and set it to a part of four. Um, so let's see what looks, uh, this looks like. So hopefully this isn't super surprising to you. Um, three is simply the addition of two twice, and it's two plus two. Um, <laughs> um, 
Four is the string four, four times. And then five in this case is the string four two times and the rest of them are nands. Um, so this type of uh, column manipulation is super common and, and we do this lots. And if you're interested in sort of learning more about this, please join me for the exercises and also check out the indexing and, or indexing and selecting uh, tutorial that I'm gonna be doing just a little bit after this. Um, during that tutorial, I'm going to go through these operations that I'm going to show you right now, but in a lot more detail. Um, so to get the data, get stuff from the data frame, there's a couple of ways. Uh, you can get data from one specific column. In this case, it's a series. You can do the normal things you would do with a series in order to get this data out. So for example, you could index into it like this. Um, you can go ahead and index into two columns. Now this returns you not a series, but a data frame, because remember, multiple series compose a data frame. Uh, so you can grab two or even more columns by sort of specifying uh, a list of columns that you'd be interested in. Um, these are the normal ways you do it, um, but there are different ways as well. A, a very powerful tool, in this case there's two very powerful tools, is lock and ilock. Uh, so lock is a little bit, so one thing you should know about lock, it's a little bit faster than doing this above. So if, for example, if I wanted to get this information, so two and zero, uh, going ahead and doing a lock operation would be faster at getting it. So lock goes ahead and it takes the index you're looking for first, and then it takes the column you're looking for second, and it gives you that data. So in this case, it gives you one, um, and this will be a little bit faster than the other ones, and I'll do a timing test a little bit later on, so just, just be patient. Um, you can also do pretty complex things with lock. Uh, for example, I can get uh, all the indices from D to A going backwards, right? So classic uh, Python uh, slice syntax. And I can get all the columns from two to three. This would of course return me a data frame instead. Uh, so for example, uh, let's go ahead and make this uh, C so we can make it a little bit shorter so you can see sort of the, the change in indices. So pretty cool. So we reversed, we, we uh, selected a subset of the indices and then we went ahead and we uh, selected these columns in this order. Uh, one problem with this is that we need to know what the index and the column names are. Um, this is generally fine, but sometimes when you read in data, you have columns that are, you have quite a lot of columns uh, that you want to go ahead and add all together to make an aggregate column. Uh, or you'll have indices that you don't necessarily understand the meanings of, but you know their numeric location. In this case, iLock is your friend. Uh, iLock basically does the exact same thing as lock, except for instead of taking the names of the indices and the names of the columns, it takes their position. So let's go from index one. Remember, everything starts at zero in, in, in programming speak. We're not, we're not using R for, thank God. Um, and going to three, uh, and let's get column zero. So this will give us one column uh, going from one to three, so B to C. Um, we can always just use iLock to just grab uh, specific indices we are looking in or we are looking for right here. Um, so iLock, lock, these are your, one of your uh, best friends in terms of getting data from data frames. Uh, do I use them uh, often? Yeah, I do. Uh, the most common thing, however, that I use is just indexing into data frames using the bracket syntax. Um, it's more natural to me. Uh, it makes more sense. I, you can obviously do anything that you could with this syntax using lock or iLock. Um, so, you know, don't, don't sort of fear away from those. I think if I were a better data scientist, I, I might just force myself to use lock and iLock uh, because they're a little bit faster and they're a little bit more uh, meaningful. Um, but this syntax, just this sugar here just looks so good to me. Um, and, I, and I just love indexing into my data frames like that. So I grew up on this stuff. Okay, that's indexing and selecting. Uh, we'll be doing a sort of a big tutorial on that a little bit later.